the fox to be the main feature. I wanted to be less flowers, more fox forward. Um, and I said, I know I picked option one, but this isn't what I had asked for with my pictures I sent you. She said that if I wanted another sketch, she was gonna charge me the difference between option one and option number two, which is $2,260. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! All right, all right. <clears throat> What's good? How you feel? Well, what's up, my guy? What is up, Camille? How you feel? Oh, I'm doing all right. Chilling. How's my how's how's my favorite tattoo trucker going on down there? I'm doing pretty good, going on six years strong now. Six years strong. You 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 coming up? You you coming after me? I'm. I think I'm about a. Uh, I think I'm about seven, eight, seven, nice. seven, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so I'm right behind you. All right. Well. You know what? Uh, you know what we about to get into, right? <laughs> that tattoo scam that's all over the internet right now. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Story time. Hopefully, one part. I'm gonna try to go as fast as I can. So, um, I wanted a tattoo by this artist who I love, who's very talented on Instagram. I'm not. This is nothing to do with her talent as a tattoo artist. Just kind of uh, the business practices that I've dealt with over the last 24 hours. So, um, booked a consult with her a couple months ago. Consult was non-refundable. It was $180. That was listed on our website. That's fine. I paid that. We had a Zoom consult on Friday. I showed her these uh, reference photos as to what I wanted for a half upper arm sleeve. Um, we kind of talked about it a little bit. I said I wasn't really picky on what kind of flowers I wanted. I wanted the fox to look like he was running. Um, foxes were my favorite animal. I said I wanted some watercolor on the fox. The flowers were just gonna be whatever she thought would look good. Um, she then proceeded to tell me after I had already booked my, I had paid for the consult. She told me that she had these three options for her design fee. So she charges a design fee to design her tattoos. So the first option was $1,500 plus tax and you get um, a concept sketch and you can make one minor change and then a final design that you'll review. Um, concept, the option number two was $3,500 plus tax um, where you got two concept sketches and a couple changes and um, a final design review again. And then option three was $6,000 plus tax where you would get multiple sketches and lots of reviews and lots of changes and like a canvas of your concept. At first I kind of thought that that price was going to then be taking it out of the final cost of my tattoo but then I find out that it was not. Um, I was still kind of blindsided, didn't really know what to say. Um, she asked which con which option worked best for me. Obviously I picked number one because like it's super expensive. And she had these pictures, so I was confident that she was going to make me a beautiful piece. So Monday rolls around and she sends me this. This is her concept sketch. It is nothing like what I sent her. It's nothing like I, what I wanted. I emailed her immediately to tell her that I wanted a full fox. I wanted a tail. I wanted the fox to be the main feature. I wanted to be less flowers, more fox forward. Um, and I said, I know I picked option one, but this isn't what I had asked for with my pictures I sent you. She said that if I wanted another sketch, she was going to charge me the difference between option one and option number two, which is $2,260. She said it was my fault that I wasn't clear that I wanted a full fox. But like, honestly, these are the two pictures I sent her, both full fox, both in the same position. I, I don't know how much clearer I could have been. She didn't ask if I wanted a full fox. I didn't think I had to say I wanted a full fox. There's gonna have to be a part two. Let's get into it. Camille in the building. I've seen it from uh, one of my subscriptions that I follow. His name is uh, Asher uh, on uh, YouTube. And he did a, you know, he did a, a segment on uh, this young lady that was like gypped out of damn near $6,000 for a tattoo that she didn't even receive. 
So I went to check it out on TikTok. I didn't realize it was like three, you know, three different TikToks because, you know, my man, he put it all together and, you know, one swift, one fell swoop. So I says, um, I said to myself, I says, wait a minute. I, I got to get my favorite tattoo trucker in on this because you're a tattoo connoisseur. You love tattoos. Your last picture that you, that you posted recently very, very, very pretty. So, Camille, I want to get your your thoughts in on this, man. This this young lady reached out to somebody online. I, I think that was the first red flag. Um, she reached out to somebody online, uh, got a got a consultation that she had to pay a hundred and eighty dollars for. Just for a Zoom call. Then after that, she had to put like a deposit of twelve hundred dollars and some other fees. That's unheard of. I, I mean, I I don't have no tattoos, and I know a lot of I know a lot of people that got tattoos, but I. You know, rest in peace to my man Goldmouth. You know, he was a tattoo artist. But Camille, man, have you experienced anything like that before? You you reached out to somebody to do some tattoo work. Did did they hit you up with a with a consultation and a and a down payment? What's what's up? What am I missing here? No, the red flags all the way around and I've used quite a few different artists i'm like 60 65 percent covered now i'm getting up there in my tattoos in my tattoo journey and i've never heard of an artist doing half of that shit like i've done consultations with artists either online or in person usually it's in person and then they'll talk to you about what you want and kind of discuss some options ask for reference photos and then usually you'll give them a deposit on the tattoo, but I've only been asked for sixty dollars to maybe a hundred bucks for that. And then they'll send you some designs in the meantime, waiting for your appointment, and they'll talk to you. Do you like this? Do you want changes? Is this what you're thinking? And then you'll sit and talk about it. You'll agree on a design and then go in. And you get it. And usually the deposit you put down on your tattoo goes towards your tattoo. Um, example, I just got my right elbow done and did some filler work on my right. I went in, I told him I wanted a broken noose on my elbow and some blackout filler work done. Showed him my reference photos. He said, all right. I gave him a $60 deposit. Tattoo day comes about. I love the design, everything, and then that sixty bucks came off of what I owed for the tattoo session. And there you go. I yeah, there's some great artists out there that charge some pretty pennies, but not like that. Camille, how how much? Well, not how much, but what what is your most expensive tattoo uh, that that you got done thus far? I'd say I've got a tattoo, my left forearm, that's like a Mother Nature tattoo, an extreme amount of detail, color, and it was a double cover-up, and that cost me 800 bucks. $800, and you said it was a double cover-up, so... What, so you, would a cover-up, so that people that understand, what a cover-up means is that you had tattoos already, but you, you, for some odd reason along your journey, you, you didn't like them no more. So you decided to get another tattoo on top of those. Right, exactly. I wanted those tattoos to be hidden and gone. So they're hidden under that tattoo. Now, if you don't mind my asking, uh, what was the significance of the tattoos that you got covered up and what was the significant of the tattoo that you got uh, to cover it? So uh, my childhood wasn't very great. 
I kind of was a dirty little kid running around on the streets. And the tattoos, the two that got covered under that tattoo were trap house tattoos. And you could very much tell that they were uh, somebody's homie giving the hookup at somebody's house. And I got it covered up with, like, Mother Nature tattoo because I'm really into nature and really want to have that oneness with the world and nature. Okay, okay, Mother Nature Camille. <laughs> so, uh, so you, so back in the day, back in the day, what was it? Like a house party or something like that, or or a tattoo party of somebody was trying to use you as a uh, as a uh, I don't want to say guinea pig, but use you as you know their their sculpture, sort of say and. To see if they can do, you know, do the tattoo right. Right. So, to summarize it, essentially, it was a it was a drug house, and some some tweaker there had a, a tattoo gun, and we were all fucked up. And he was like, "Hey, let me tattoo you for free." You know, you know, wasn't in the right state of mind, so I was like, "Yeah, that's awesome, cool, do it." And then he did it, and it was oh. Man, that was one of those times I should have said no. <laughs> well, you well, know, kids would be kids, but you you grew up and uh, you grew out of it, uh, became an awesome trucker, and uh, decided to turn your life around, and and here we are. So, Camille, man, the consultation alone, a hundred and eighty-five dollars for a Zoom call. I mean, I can understand maybe maybe thirty, forty, fifty dollars at least because you know your time is important, you know, and you you know you're you you're a tattoo artist, you're promoting yourself on Instagram, and you know you're gonna get like a gang of people coming at you, like you know uh you might just right. get people that might just be less in, less interested. And then you got more, and then you got other people that is more interested. So, to to cut down the fluff, you'll say, "Hey, give me a con." You know, I'll I'll do I'll talk to you for thirty five, forty five dollars, and that pretty much will cut down the interest. You see what I'm saying? But a hundred and eighty five dollars, yeah. though. So part two of Fox Tattoo. So here's the email where she tells me that um, I didn't tell her that I wanted the fox to have a full fox, um, even though I sent her two pictures saying I wanted the fox to have a full fox. So you can pause to read. So now I've paid her um, uh, $2,695, the consultation, the design fee, plus a $1,000 deposit for my actual tattoo date to book that. And um, she's telling me that she wants another $2,260 um, in order to just redraw my sketch, even though I told her, I sent her the pictures and showed her exactly what I wanted. She's saying it's my communication skills and that I didn't communicate exactly what I wanted. So you can pause to read my response to her. Where I tell her that I don't think it's a good business practice and that she should make her clients aware before they book a consultation that you're going to ask for a design fee on top of the tattoo fee. So then she kindly comes back and tells me that I can um, do this option where I just pay for option one again for another $16.95 instead of the $22.60 and she'll make me another sketch. So again, I'm just trying to make her understand that I didn't, I wasn't aware when I booked the consultation that I was going to have to pay this design fee. Um, and then I think that I urged her to put it on her website that she was going to charge people this before they booked in with her. And so she sent me this response. Where she says that it was an optional fee. Um, and I was never told that that fee was optional. She presented me with three options, asked me which one um, I was most comfortable with. I should have walked away at that point. Um, that's on me. I'm that person that will eat the wrong meal that comes to me at the restaurant and thank you for a bad haircut and all that stuff. So honest, that that is on me. But I feel like she could have been clear from the get-go. I didn't know there was an option four. She never went over option four. She 
one, two, three. Those were the options that she gave me. And she goes on to say that um, regarding my reference material, that it looks the, the other foxes, she didn't like the position they, they were in and the one looked like it was um, scooting when they get an itchy back end, which I'm really sure that the artist that made those tattoos would be happy to hear that that's what she thinks their work looks like. And that like if it's my financial um, situation that I can't afford to pay for this um, redesign, then I should maybe like look at getting a tattoo in the future. Um, it's not that it's not that I don't have the finances for it. It's that I can't give her any more money when I feel like I wasn't um, up being she wasn't upfront with me from the beginning. So then I call her out for not telling me that there was a fourth option and asking her if she's going to give me a refund because um, I didn't get that option from the beginning. Sorry, there's going to be a part three. Well, that's just absurd. And normally that goes towards your tattoo. So if it's like a $500 tattoo and it's a 185 consultation, from my experience, is that goes towards the tattoo. Whew, man. All right. So let's talk about this 1000 What was it? One. I know it was over $1,000. There was a... Yeah, she gave her three package options. One of them was like a thousand something dollars or so. It was weird. The three different packages where she'd pay a grand or whatever, and then she'd get the one design and no changes or whatever. And then option two where she got like two changes and two designs or something and three where it was unlimited, but it was like six grand for the unlimited. And none of that even went towards the tattoo. Six thousand dollars for a tattoo. Well, I, now you know what? Maybe for a full body. Do do you think? Do you think six six thousand dollars is warranted for maybe a full body? No. For if you could get your whole body tattooed for six grand, I would be suspicious about that because one of my arms was like three thousand dollars just for one of my arms so i'm at like 15 grand with what i've got so far and i'm looking at about six grand for my back oh six grand for the back yeah they're expensive but they're not that expensive and that was one little tattoo on the uh upper upper arm on the bicep i'd say that that would be like a thousand dollar tattoo ish so I would imagine that these these tattoos that cost in the upper echelon of a thousand or more, those are definitely going to have to be permanent and significant tattoos to you, right? I, w I would imagine. Right. Right. That's a good chunk of money you're investing into yourself. I would, I would definitely hope that you'd be very sure about what you're getting and that it means something to you. Now, so far, now I'm not sure if this young lady paid, uh, you know, paid $6,000. I, I think, I think she paid into it like over two grand, right? Yeah, I think she got right about $3,000 and didn't even get a tattoo or anything. And she got the one design that the lady traced off of the internet. The lady went and found a different picture of the fox on the internet and then just traced that and added some flowers that she also traced from another tattoo. So she took two other tattoos, morphed them together and then just traced it. So it wasn't even an actual design or an original design or anything. She copied somebody else's work for that. Interchange and then a final design that you'll review. Um, go watch that whole video. She traced it. My crappy sketch. She traced it. My original crappy fox isn't an original. She just traced it. Wow. And 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 double charged her. Yep. Now the young lady. Did you see the update? No, I. Did you I see did... the update where the tattoo artist was talking about uh how she went to a class to learn how to charge people correctly and was bragging on the internet about how she started this process of charging people and doing these packages and she made an additional $15,000 more in one month than she had been doing 
doing it the normal way that all the other artists do it. I I haven't seen that update. So in other words, she claims that she she learned from somebody else to scam people pretty much. Yeah, she went and took a class on how to scam other people with other tattoo artists. So she's not the only one that's out there doing this. There's other artists that have all taken this class and learned to do this and are getting away with it. Now, would you think would you would you think that these is all artists that's promoting themselves online? Because these can't be like legitimate artists that have like like tattoo parlors and everything, right? It can't be. No. I don't think it's actual reputable artists that are doing it. There's I I've been in some top notch shops and talked to some really up there artists. They don't do this. I would see this coming out of like a kind of ghetto shop somewhere where people are just uneducated on tattoo etiquette in shops and whatnot. Got to be some podunk town where they have no other option and don't know better. Along your tattoo journey, you know, you, you, you started the trap house and everything, but through your journey, how did you come across a uh, vetting these tattoo artists that did the, that did the work for you? Well, I'd start like going somewhere new and needing to get a new artist or whatever. I'd start on like Instagram and the internet period, look at shops, look at the reviews that the shops had, and then go through and look through all the artists and pay close attention to the details and their line work and the consistency. And then if I found one that I really liked, then I would message that artist and ask him like, hey, how long you been tattooing? What what uh, style of tattooing would you say is your strongest point? What is your weakest? Do you charge hourly or by the piece? Um, stuff like that. And take a tattoo that in my head, I'm like, all right, this is a decent sized tattoo. It will take about five, six hours. Ask this guy, how long do you think you will take to do this tattoo? What would you charge? And like, I have a rough idea of what a tattoo should cost or how long it should take to do. And then I kind of just go about it like that. Or I'll go in to the shop and get a smaller, simpler tattoo done and pay attention to how the artist is tattooing me, conducting their business, et cetera. All right. So Camille, uh, you know, I, I, we talked, we talked before and, uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, I think tattoo artists, piercing artists, I think they got the best jobs, man. <laughs> Especially when they be working on women. Right. I, I, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, you guys get some tattoos in some weird places, like for real, for real. <laughs> and I, you know. I, I can't, I mean, I can understand the tattoo artists themselves. You know, this is a job and, and pretty much if you see, if you see one vaginal vagina and one boob and one booty, you've seen them all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So by them, right. do, by them doing the work, I, I don't think they would get aroused or anything like that. But what was the... Where is your most, you said 65% of your body. So I got a two-part for you. So where is the most significant tattoo is? And the other question is, when you had it done, did you, did you have on a bathing suit or was you full commando? Uh, define significant. <laughs> uh, I would say probably like the most like private areas, like maybe the boob area, the, the, the downstairs area. Uh, I, I, All right, I've got my coochie meow meow tattooed, and I was full, 
full commando, but they do those kinds of tattoos usually in like back rooms where there's not other people that could come in and see what's going on. And I just had to be full commando, just kind of lay in there awkwardly waiting for it to be done. What was the Camille, what was the conversation? I'm sure y'all had to have the conversation. I mean, dude down there working on your stuff and uh, what kind of conversation yeah, y'all having? Like, like, yo, did you see this movie, uh, Fast Five? You know, <laughs> what kind of conversation is going on <laughs> right. here? So the artist was actually more professional about it than I was because, you know, I'm all nervous and like, ooh. And uh, I told him what I wanted and he just kind of looked at me like, hmm, okay. So he starts tattooing and he's being all professional and I'm just sitting there awkwardly like, eyes wide like wow this is uh this is something for sure pain level yeah the artist was more professional than i was pain level pain level i'm not a good person to ask about pain uh, well what was the what was the what was the matt's pain level on on one of your one of your tattoos okay Part three. I hope this is that part. I'm sorry. I hate different parts, you guys. So, um, so then she says, like, it, I, am I saying I would have rather have not seen the design ahead of time, um, and we would have ended up in this same situation where I didn't like the sketch? And you know what? Maybe that would have happened, but at least I would have still had my sixteen hundred dollars that I paid for the design. Um, if I'm going to end up in the same situation anyways, I'd rather keep my sixteen hundred dollars um, and see the design day of and decide I don't like it then. And then she says that she's been sweet and patient with me and that I've um, made nasty comments, which I didn't call her any names. I just told her I didn't agree with the way that her fees were explained and that I wasn't, it wasn't made clear that there was a fourth option and that we could have moved forward without paying the design fee. And honestly, I did really want a tattoo from her. She's a great artist. Um, her, her Instagram is beautiful and I was excited to get a tattoo. And when I thought that I had to pick one of those three options or not get this tattoo that I've been looking forward to, I did pick option one, I did. Um, and like I said in my last video, that's on me. So she says she is not going to refund me anything. Um, she has, she's not going to do her, give me her creativity for nothing. That, you know, 10 minute sketch of that fox that she sent me that looks nothing like the pictures I sent her. She wants to be paid for that. And, um, she's keeping all my deposits and everything. So I just explained to her that like, I don't think I'm being nasty. I just feel like, you know, I want to be heard. Um, I don't think that she was clear. I would have picked option four if I knew that that was an option for me. Um, and the fact that I paid her sixteen ninety five for that Fox sketch, I feel like this good compensation for her time. But I think that the thousand dollar deposit that I gave her for my tattoo session that is not going to be happening, um, I would like that returned. It would also be nice if she would take some responsibility to say that I forgot to tell you about option four, or I should have asked more questions um, during the process. Like she's the professional, she designs these tattoos for a living. Um, if she didn't feel like she was clear on what I wanted, I would have preferred more questions. Um, we met for half an hour on Zoom. I was supposed to get a 45 minute consultation. It only took half an hour. She had 15 more minutes to ask me more questions if she thought she needed more information. I just didn't feel like, uh, like I didn't, I can't read her mind either. I didn't know that I had to tell her I wanted a full Fox tattoo when I sent her full fox pictures and I said, I guarantee if you had sent me a beautiful sketch of a full fox, we'd probably be moving forward and I probably would be getting this tattoo. But unfortunately we're in this situation and um, I'm out uh, $2,600. I'd say like fingers and in between your fingers and ankle and eyebrows, that, that sucked. I was crying, that was 10 out of 10 cussing, gritting my teeth, pissed. Your eyebrows? I didn't realize you had your eyebrows, D. Yeah, my eyebrows are technically tattoos. It's um, microblading. Wow. Yeah, my eyebrows are always perfect. Wow. Okay, 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 okay. So, yeah. <sighs> 
so to this young lady right here, unfortunately, you know, she didn't get none of her money back. Um, being that she didn't get her money back, uh, she was pretty much duped from the start. I I, I see. Is there any is there any uh, 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 recourses that she can take? Uh, maybe maybe um, small claims court. Maybe I mean is is there anything that she can do to try to recoup her money back? I'd say small claims. I mean, you can sue anybody over anything. I don't know if she signed a contract or what that contract said. And, uh, yeah, might as well roll the dice. I think it's only like 50 bucks small to file small claims. But I don't think that lady's going to give her her money back or do anything. Maybe if it keeps gaining traction like it is, maybe the lady will do it just to try and make amends and try and save her practice, but I doubt it. Wow. That is crazy. I mean, that, that is crazy to, to, to see somebody superly getting scammed like that. Like, I mean, because I, I've seen plenty of videos, not as that magnitude, but I've seen plenty of videos, TikTok videos where people would, go on TikTok and, and, and hit up somebody after they see somebody on TikTok and then realize that, you know, that person wasn't reputable and all like that. They probably didn't get their outfit or they didn't get their hair did or they got their haircut wrong or whatever, whatever, you know. So, I, you know, to see this, to see this happening to her, it's like, Wow. You know, I mean, I mean, that was that's shameful. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I, I, I you know, I kind of hope that um, that she do get some type of, uh, you know, some some type of recourse out this situation, because, uh, you know, this person, this this so-called tattoo artist really need to be exposed for for the for the ill business that they're doing you know the the 185 dollars consultation and the and the three packages and all like that all over the internet it's no no that's oh camille yeah, before that's not I, a way to be conducting business exactly before i let you go camille what what, what are your suggestions for people that's looking for uh, again, I know you. I, I know how you broke it down and how you look for them. But what do you what do you suggest people do? You know, after seeing after seeing some some shenanigans like this, would you ever uh, would you ever take validation in people on TikTok or on Instagram now after seeing this? No, I do my own research. Obviously, the. TikTok and all that good stuff is a good place to start, but Google reviews, Facebook reviews, review everywhere. And most of the time, if people are getting sued or they're getting bad reviews and it's getting taken down, so you can take those down on Facebook and Google and whatnot. You could usually just search bad reviews and somewhere it'll pop up. And then just trust your gut. Talk to people, talk to the artist, kind of feel the situation out. And yeah. Just trust your gut on after you've done all of the reviews and your research. All right, all right. My favorite tattoo trucker, Camille. <laughs> awesome conversation as always, ma'am. Thank you very much for stopping in and chopping it up with your boy. I really do appreciate it. Well, of course, anytime. All right, you take it easy. Stay safe out there and we'll get back at it again in another one. All right, sounds good. You stay safe. I will. There's so many battles on my left and my right. Take a shot for all of your problems. Don't worry about them tonight. It's called shot burning.